to our broadcast. We thank God for you being here with us on today. We're going to continue our discussion that we started a week ago uh, concerning the 12 uh, secrets to abundant living. Abundant living. Abundant mean plentiful. You want to have plenty of life to live because God has given you, amen, gracious, great life to live and we want you to live your best life but you have to keep certain principles in order to ensure that you're living the best life. And we're going over these secrets to help you enhance uh, that abundant living that Christ has purchased for us, all right? So we talked about on last week, uh, there are actually four key questions that I must ask myself that is a part of these 12 secrets. Those uh, four key questions are, who am I? What am I? Where am I? And what do I really want? These are key questions that must be asked in order for you to reach the goal of abundant living. All right? We're going to get right into our lesson. Uh, last week also we talked about uh, planning. All right? And so we're going to get into our lesson on this week, uh, taken from 2 Timothy chapter number 1 verse number one through verse number seven, we're going to talk about today, starting with the spiritual life, God's way, life, God's way. That's what we want to do. So, all right, let's read our printed text, and then we'll come back and begin our discussion of our segment for today. All right. Second Timothy chapter number one, verse number one through verse seven. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be fulfilled, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfinite faith that is in thee, this is it, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy, thy mother Eunice, and I, I am persuaded that in thee also, wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, doing, and reading of his word. All right? We're talking about starting with the spiritual. And when we talk about starting with the spiritual, it involves your walk with God and your relationship with him through the spirit. And that this is important. So a little bit of background. The Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy in the latter days of his life. And Timothy is ministering at Ephesus. And he is also dealing with a lot of hardships. Right now, 
um, let me say this to you. Never uh, predicate your worship based upon your hardship experiences. Uh, you must also understand that regardless of what you're going through, you must also continue to minister the gospel on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, at this time, the Apostle Paul himself were dealing with a lot of hardships himself because uh, he was writing from prison uh, in Rome. And so uh, it's actually it's a prison letter that he is writing, <coughs> Second Timothy. Uh, he's, he's writing a prison letter because he's writing uh, from prison. And so he's writing to encourage Timothy. Isn't that amazing? How can a person be incarcerated and, and yet encouraging someone that's free? Uh, it should be the way, other way around. Someone free should be encouraging someone in prison. But that's the way it is when you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Your joy is not predicated upon your location. It is the joy of the Lord which gives you your strength and therefore you're able to minister in situations and settings where others uh, would be depressed, would be cast down, would not be able to minister. And so that's why it is so important not to allow hardships to affect your opportunity and availability for ministry, all right? There are a lot of people who, when it's time to minister, they have a lot of excuses of other things that they, want, that they need to do. Uh, but listen, when it's time for you to minister the gospel, God has prepared an open door for you, and it would behoove you to step through or to walk on through that open door that God has prepared for you to represent him and to minister his word, all right? And so now, uh, he is writing uh, to Timothy to encourage him uh, with the fundamental principles of life and to also um, invite him to come to him in Rome and to spend some time with him during his final days. Uh, Paul and Timothy was very close. Paul considered Timothy a, his son uh, because he was a son in the gospel uh, because Paul had won him. And so as a result, uh, this letter that he wrote to uh, Timothy shares a couple of the secrets that we're discussing in these 12 secrets to abundant living, all right? Secret number six, start working your plan with the spiritual. Remember last week we talked about planning. So now a plan uh, uh, is only good if you work the plan. And so therefore you got to have some uh, um, idea of how you're going to implement the plan and how you're going to bring the plan to fruition. And so therefore, uh, our, from our perspective, your plans sh cannot be brought to fruition without the spiritual. We are spiritual beings and therefore we must understand that we must have a relationship with the spiritual, all right? And so he says to Timothy, kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you. In other words, he's saying to him, stir up the gift that is in you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the Holy Ghost in some churches, uh, but he's saying, stir it up, rekindle it. Uh, uh, don't let it lie dormant. Uh, don't let your Holy Spirit not work for you. And so he says to him, I call to your remembrance that you stir up, thou stir up the gift, glory be to God, of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. And so uh, what he is saying is, I've laid hands on you, i prayed for you, you filled with the Holy Ghost, now I need you to stir up that gift that is on the inside of you. All right? I don't know who I'm talking to today, but maybe your spirit have not begun to lay dormant and maybe you're not as on fire and as uh, kindled as you were when you first got saved. Well, you need to stir up that gift on the inside of you. When you begin to pray and begin to anoint uh, uh, yourself and, and allow the Spirit of God to work inside of you, your excitement will come back. Your joy will be restored. And uh, those kinds of things 
will happen. And so if you want to live an abundant life, it starts with the spiritual. We pay more attention to diets, sports, exercise, health, uh, recreation, wealth, and so forth than we do to cultivating our own spirit. You got to cultivate your spirit because you, you can't allow just any old spirit to take up residence with you. And therefore, you have to cultivate your spirit. Now, once you cultivate something, it becomes second nature and it becomes a part of you in your everyday living. And you don't have to really worry about it anymore because it becomes who you are. And so that's why it's so important to cultivate in the early days so that it can become second nature to you uh, to be in the spirit, all right? And so uh, we don't want to give God uh, what is left over after we have done everything else and we don't have nothing left over but the dregs and we want to give that to God. We don't want to do that, but we want to cultivate our spirits. We'll pick up right here as soon as we come back from our first break. Stay with us. Before we went to break, we were talking about cultivating our, our spirits. And in cultivating our spirits, the one first thing you need to recognize and the first thing that you need to know and consider is this. You cannot live any way that you want to live and do what you want, watch what you want, eat what you want, and fill your hearts with all the filth of the world. You cannot do that. You cannot cultivate your spirit. You must be mindful. Uh, the Bible says this way, we need to ponder the path of our footsteps. In other words, we need to look where we're going. We need to look at what we're doing. We need to look at what we're consuming. We must look at the company that we're keeping. We must look at all of those attributes and all those things because they have an impact on our spirit. Uh, you ever been in, some, been in a place and <clears throat> you went in there and you got there and you started feeling, as I would put it, some kind of way and you didn't know what it was you didn't recognize what it was uh, until you actually left that place and you said wow something was not right in there I didn't my spirit wasn't right I didn't feel and that's the reason why you have to cultivate your spirit because when your spirit is cultivated you become sensitive to those kinds of settings and those kinds of uh, venues and you will not frequent them because you know it's going to wear on your spirit and that's why it's so important First thing you must have is an ability to discern, a spirit, an ability to discern the spirits, all right? And so you can't fill our hearts with the filth of the world and expect it to have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of us and allowing us to have abundant life, all right? Now, we can sum up in a commercial uh, exactly where we are, and it will go something like this. In two short Sundays, uh, look, life like look life did look like this. On our spiritual miracles growth formula, called Church on the Go, just one hour per week inside these walls, and all the trash of the world will fade away. All right, into history. Right, just take Church on the Go. And all your problems will go with it, all right? 
That's the commercial, all right? Spend all your life on anything you want. And with church on the go, you will find abundant life that Jesus Christ have promised us all. Now, there's nobody that's watching <laughs> or here today would subscribe to that commercial. <laughs> Glory be to God. Nobody. But that's the way we live. But that's the way we live. But it, it is. It is the way we live. And we've got to be careful about that. Everything else is more important to us than spiritual things. God gets whatever is left over after everything else is finished. Uh, and and, if, and let me tell you, let me, let me give you some information that might help you come to the conclusion in your own life. Do you read the Word of God first when you get out of bed, or do you read it last when you, before you go to bed at night? That will tell you the priority that you have. Uh, so we must understand that God must have preeminence. He must put Him first in everything that you do in your life if you're going to have abundant life through Him. Now, you can have an abundance of life, but it may not be through Him. You know, the Bible said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And so as a result, you can think that you're living an abundant life, but the question becomes, who are you living the abundant life for? And so uh, we're advocating that that life must be lived unto Christ in order for it to profit you. And so therefore, we got to be careful about coming to church, trying to get church on the go, we won't take out, glory be to God, and we want to come in and, and sing a solo uh, and listen to a hymn, and I've done my duty, and then I'm going to play golf, the, the ride go-karts or four-wheelers and, uh, or whatever else, go to the movies or, or whatever else people do when they don't go to church, all right? And so we must understand that uh, when we can't go anyplace else, then we want to go to church, all right? And that's why some people... Uh, we sing the song, I came running when they said unto me, glory be to God, let us go into the house of the Lord. No, oftentimes we come screaming and kicking because we're in a fix, we're in a trick of some sort, and we don't know how to navigate it or get out of it, and so we turn to the Lord. And so what I'm saying, now, there's nothing wrong with that. No, I'm not discouraging anybody from doing that. But if you want to have abundant life without the scream and the kicks, the time is to come now because God says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart as the children of Israel did in the wilderness and provoke me unto my wrath. And so that's why it's so important for us to do that. Uh, listen, I, I'm being accused right now of advocating that we shouldn't do anything else but go to church and have nothing but Jesus. No, 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 that's not what I'm advocating. Uh, that is not, but I am advocating that if all must start with Jesus, and if it starts with Jesus, it should end with Jesus. And so if you do that, you don't have to worry about the in-between because you'll, be, have some, you'll have something that's wholesome on, uh, on, uh, in-between. It must start with the spiritual. And in that line of thought, I need you to turn with me to Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 21 through verse number 27. And let's see how we get it started with the spiritual. All right. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 21 through verse number 27. The Bible says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And so what he is saying is, it's not just lip service that you bring to him and think you're going to enter into the kingdom. There must be a life that is lived behind your confession of faith. You must do things God's way, all right? And so verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. 
glory be to God, you can do wonderful works all day long and not have salvation. Salvation is not by works. It is uh, by grace. It's not by works, lest any man should boast, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. By the grace of God, by the spirit of God, uh, are we say, you must have the Holy Spirit. You must be born again. You must be born just like he told Nicodemus in St. John chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit. You must be baptized. Sprinkle not going to get it. Running under the sink ain't going to get it. Running on through the shower ain't going to get it. Baptism is by submersion in water. We, we are buried with him through water baptism in Jesus' name, and we rise to walk in the newness of life. And God promises that they, those that are baptized, that he will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. And so the promise is unto you, your children, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, God will pour it out to each one of us if you have the right mindset, all right? And so, uh, verse 23, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What are you saying? Those who uh, call themselves uh, uh, saying, Lord, Lord, uh, and wanting to get into the kingdom, and those who call themselves casting out demons in his name, doing mighty works in his name, he is saying to you in the last day, in the day of judgment, what he is saying to you that I'm going to say to you, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, for I knew you not. In other words, I never knew you. Glory be to God. And so uh, that's what we have to understand. Therefore, whosoever hear it, these saying of mine, and do it them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house Upon a rock. Glory be to God. Built his house upon a rock. We must stop building sandcastle temples to be destroyed by the first rain. We'll pick up right there as soon as we come back from our final break. Stay with us. It's about to get in. back. Thank you for remaining with us. We're headed down the homeward stretch now, and we have been talking about on today, life God's way. Cannot live any kind of way and think that we're going to make it into the kingdom of God. And before we went to break, we said we must stop building uh, sand castles in the sand to be destroyed by the first rain. And you notice every time a person can build a beautiful wonderful sandcastle, but as soon as the first rain comes, it's gone. And so that's the way many of us are. We build these sandcastles, and then as soon as we hit a test or a snag or a hardship or a trouble or a situation, uh, we get washed away by the first rain. And that's what we must stop to stop doing. We must develop a spiritual life. And when you develop a spiritual life, you can have some stamina. You can have some enduring power to stand when things come against you, all right? We must build firm spiritual foundations that will withstand the rain 
uh, wind, uh, hurricane, and earthquakes. We must build our castles in that fashion. And therefore, you must have a strong foundation. That's why I'm talking about these 12 uh, secrets, these key principles. These are foundational, and you must get them early on so that when uh, the storms come or the winds blow, you won't be blown away, or when the rain comes, you won't be washed away. You must seismic design your spiritual life so that waves passing through the earth do not disturb the foundation of your spiritual life. And so therefore you have to understand, and the question you must ask yourself is, can I withstand a 5.8 or 6.9 or 8.2 uh, earthquake uh, on the Richter uh, against my spiritual life and still say that I have abundant life and still say that I am work, walking with God, I'm praising and giving glory with him. Not only that, we must seismic design our marriages, our families, our churches, uh, and all of this that are being hit by these earthquakes, these hur hurricanes, and other natural disasters that come our way and cause us to leave the church and not walk with God any longer. We must seismic design those things. Listen, I remember here in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, when we didn't have to do seismic designs of any structures in our city because uh, we had never had a hurricane. But then after Hurricane Hugo came our way, we had to then um, exercise seismic design on all of our buildings. Any building that's built in North Carolina, now, in Charlotte, North Carolina now, must be able to withstand at least 120 to 130 uh, mile per hour sustained winds from a hurricane. And so uh, why? Because now we know that we are susceptible even though we're a couple hundred miles inland. And so as a result, you must seismic design your life with Christ also. And so uh, many of us, uh, I'm finding many folks are breaking apart because they are not properly founded on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we have to understand. Abundant life begins with kindling afresh the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to tell you, don't let anybody fool you. You must have the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that without the Spirit of the Lord, we are none of His. It's not an option. It's not uh, something that you can have or not have. It is not something that some get and some don't. You must have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit operating on the inside of you in order to have abundant life. You have to have it. Not only that, in order to have eternal life too. <laughs> but, and so how, you, how are you going to have abundant life without eternal life? That's the only way you can have life and have it more abundantly, which means plentiful, is to have uh, uh, the Holy Ghost. Now, secret number seven, we're going to start talking about how you cannot cheat to win. <laughs> you can't cheat to win. We just read the scripture where those who professed over in Matthew, chapter number seven, verse 21 through 27, uh, where uh, those people were coming to Christ uh, saying, yea, Lord, yea, Lord, in the last day. And, and God said, I don't even know you. you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And all those that say, yea, Lord, not going to enter in. And so therefore, you must have certain foundational principles in place and operating if you're going to receive the eternal gift that God has prepared for us, all right? We must do life God's way. You cannot cheat and win. We must compete according to the rules of godliness, right? i never forget, uh, I was up for a uh, elevation in our organization and uh, the other persons who were uh, up for the same elevation I began to do some things that were not consistent with godliness. And, you know, sometimes you, you know, you get angry and you, you, you want to hit them back. Uh, but uh, I, I couldn't do that. So I went to uh, one of the wise bishops uh, in our organization and consulted with him as to how 
I needed to uh, confront this. And uh, he said to me, and I'll never forget, that nobody's going to ever really give you anything, but you're going to have to fight for everything that you get. But here's the key. You must do it God's way. It must be in a holy fashion. You must fight with holy. Listen, the word of God is quick and sharp as any two-edged sword. You can use the word of God to fight with. It is your weapon. And so therefore, uh, when you use the word of God as your weapon, you can't go wrong. Let other folks do whatever they will. Let them do all the ungodly stuff that they want to do. But you use the words of God to be your weaponry. And so when you do that, you'll come out on top and you will win every time. And that's why it is important for you to have a firm spiritual foundation so that you won't be carried away with every wind of doctrine and everything that comes across your mind. Right. So you have to do that. And so you must uh, do that. Uh, we must live according to God's rules. Just look around and see what living by the rules of God have gotten you. Living by the rules of God, have, uh, what it has gotten you. It hasn't been popular, but it works. And so therefore we have to let that compare to the word of God and the world's uh, that set its own rules and how those folk live and we cannot live that way. All right. All right. I'm about out of time now, but I invite you to join us again. You don't miss one of these segments now because it's very important because we're heading down the strip now. Next week, we're going to talk about redefining abundance and we'll go from there. But until then, don't forget to join us on Sunday morning. Glory be to God. We're meeting at the Soul Connection Banquet Hall, 8531 North Tryon Street, Charlotte, North Carolina. Join us for our service at 1130. Until then, 